All right, so this is my fourth attempt at trying to do a 70.3 Worlds post-race interview. It is 1.52 a.m. I slept for four hours and woke up. It's absolutely eating away at me. I have to uh, give my side of the story. Um, I It's just been a very difficult time, and maybe people looking in will think that that's like a little bit weird. It's just a, it's just a sport. And I mean, this, this lets you understand kind of your orientation in the sport, but at the end of the day, it's my life. Like I've devoted myself to this and I devoted myself to that race. And so, um, I think I somewhat am justified in feeling really emotional. It's been very difficult. So I'm going to try and give you I'm not going to try and give you. I am going to give you my side of the story and what unfolded in as truthful a manner and as uh, unbiased a manner as I can. And then that will be the end of it. I hope that that's going to allow me to fall asleep and uh, to move on because I really need to move on here. So uh, the race started off really well. I knew that I needed to have a better uh, swim than I did in Milwaukee. And so I focused on technique. Jerry Rodriguez had me focus on technique uh, for two straight weeks. And I had a really good swim. Two minutes, 10 down to the front, 30 down to Christian. Admittedly, the 30 down to Christian, I kind of knew that uh, he would probably was be having a bad day. Onto the bike, uh, did, you know, put in good work to bridge the gap to the, the next group in front of us, about 360 watts then kind of coalesced with Thor, Sam, and a couple other uh, strong bikers. And so it was just kind of the, uh, you know, pass, pass back, pass, just because once you get into the pack, it's quite easy, as opposed to when you're on the front of it, it's much harder. And so that was just the dynamic. And then uh, at about 70 kilometers, we were going, well, I began to make a pass on as the report says, uh, three athletes, and if you pass three athletes, it can take, you have 25 seconds per athlete, and we're on a course that is a very small, single lane, uh, European road, uh, it is going up and down and side to side, and so I made this pass, and at some point during this pass, we were going on a downhill, and a left hand sweeping bend. And if you know anything about riding a bike and cornering, you know that when you're going around a bend at a fast pace, you start off on the far right side, you go to the apex of the corner, and then the forces of the, the speed in the corner force you back out to the far right side. So that's what was happening as I was making the pass. Obviously, making the pass, it's also happening to me. These, these, uh, I believe, uh, like inertia and gravity type effects. And so, I made the pass. I, I in the briefing, it was well discussed that drafting was going to be, you know, really, really strongly enforced. And so, I was all I could think about was making the pass in the allotted time and not slotting in so that I don't get a drafting penalty. And so then I made the pass on the left side of these athletes, and I believe it was the safe pathway to take. Uh, otherwise, had I not taken this pathway, I would be pushing those athletes off the road, and that would be very dangerous for everybody. And so then I successfully made the pass. Um, I I may I probably I'm not going to I'm not going to um, I'm not going to debate. I see no reason why the referee who made the call that's about to come would lie, you know? What's the incentive to lie? Did I cross the center line? Probably, yes. Was there a center line? No. Did Was I aware that I wasn't able to cross, that I was supposed to draw a center line in my mind and not cross it on a single lane road, narrow European road? The answer to that is no, I was not aware of that. Whether that's a rule or not, like I was not aware of it. And so, um, so the referee rolls up, blows the whistle. Uh, I get out of the bars, look over, say, it shows me a card. Um, I say, for what? 
and he says, for crossing the center line. And I say, but there is no center line. And he says, but you have to abide by, you have to abide by an imaginary center line. And so I admittedly, when I heard the whistle, I was so taken aback and I knew I was getting a penalty that I didn't see the card. I, I literally didn't see it. I was like already taken totally aback. And as well, so after this whole thing unfolded, I was very upset and asked for, to see the report, to, to see like what the ref said I did. And the referee says that he showed me a red card. I, in my mind, thought I received a blue card because I actually was like, I didn't really, I, like I said, I didn't know this rule. Like I didn't, I didn't fully understand if this is a rule and it, and it wasn't in the briefing. So I, I don't know that, you know what I mean? I can't say with certainty if it is or isn't a, a specific rule. There certainly is a center line rule. I'm not going to debate that. And if there is a center line rule, then I, then I guess even if there isn't a center line, I understand why you, you perhaps would assume an athlete would know that you have to do, you have to draw an imaginary one. If there isn't one, there should be one, basically. You know what I mean? So I, I, I'm not going to debate. Um, I'm not going to debate that. I understand that that is for safety. It was a closed course. Um, but I understand, and it was a very narrow road, but I also understand the safety aspect that at the end of the day, you don't want athletes going into the left hand side of the road due to potential cars coming. So I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to um, debate if it's a rule that in the future, um, I need to be more aware of the imaginary line. I didn't, so to finish the story, I went to the penalty tent. Uh, they asked me what color card I got. I didn't know what color card I got. They also didn't know what color card I got. Fortunately, there was another athlete in the tent who did know what color card I got. I got a red card, which is a disqualification.
Some words for Talbot. I'm gonna catch Bowman out right now. I pulled in, I said, I think I got a blue card. And they start the watch. Because they're not going to tell you, the, like, they're not going to tell you, no, no, actually, you got a red card. Or, no, no, you got a yellow card. Like, you, you're supposed to tell them what color card you got. And I, I didn't know what color card I got. And so, um, an athlete told me, hey, I, you got a red card. I, I said, what does that even mean? He said, you're disqualified. I said, oh, wow. So, this really sucks. Like, you know, I'm not even going to get to finish the race. And so I served a five minute penalty and I was just dumb. Like I didn't need to do that. I could have just rode away or literally got off my bike and left if I wanted to. But I did want to finish the race. I was already here. And uh, so I, I finished the five minute penalty for no reason. Got back on my bike, finished, went to transition, racked my bike. Talbo was across from me. Uh, I, I explained to him what happened that I, I got this. I, I, I got a center line violation. You know, I'm mad. I think it's totally uh, incorrect. I think it's totally unjust. I think it doesn't, it doesn't take any factor like how you ride a bike on a bend at these speeds. I, I felt very, I felt like deeply, deeply uh, wronged. Right here, Lionel. Let's go, Lionel. Get your shoes off. So what do you do? You just want to get your stuff. What are you gonna do? right fucking there man I know I know I also I then went to the head referee because I was unsure if I was allowed to finish and the head referee said you may continue and you may protest now that one I did here <laughs> And so then I finished the run. I think I feel like I did a fairly respectful run. I ran a 113. Um, I, I, you know, I felt I felt really good. Uh, when I crossed the finish line, I immediately it's pouring rain. I'm I'm freezing cold. I immediately went to the head of rules in officiating, thinking that I was doing a protest. And that's Jimmy Riccatello. And we had a conversation. He heard everything I had to say. You know, not nothing came of it. Uh, it turns out that's not how you do a protest. Like, I didn't know that. I've never actually been versed on how to do a protest. Um, and so, this report, so eventually, long story short, you know, I'm very upset, clearly very upset. As you can see, still to this day, I'm still uh, very upset. And so then I, of course, afterwards messaged uh, Jimmy and uh, a pro member membership and said, I want to know, like, what was I disqualified for? I want to know. And so then a few days passed, they, they eventually, the referee created a report. I read the report. I believe that report, you know, has been sent out to media outlets. Um, I disagree with, you know, things in the report. For instance, they said I, uh, the referee said I was riding on the left side of the road. I totally disagree with that. I was making, I am well aware of the rules, um, just not the imaginary center line one. That's the one that, the only rule that I wasn't aware of. And so I was started on the right hand side of the road, went to the center, and that center was probably being taken by an athlete. And so I went a little left to center to illegally make the pass. And then I went back to the right hand side of the road. So I, I totally disagree with that I was not riding on the left hand side of the road in that report it says I was riding dangerously I mean I'm not the I'm not the most like like I don't take dangerous things it was wet it's windy I'm not like a descender or something so I'm not taking risks and things like that I'm purely trying to make a pass within the allotted time and not uh, in fact I believe to not have crossed the center line would have been very dangerous because I would have forced an athlete off the road. I would have forced him off his line, off the off the off the apex of the corner that we were running that we were going through. So I disagree with that. And then the final now the, the this crossing the center line piece is in there, and I, I mean I I'm not going to debate that that I didn't perhaps go over the center line slightly. So you know that that is is probably true. Um, it also says in the report that I was told that I could continue and protest 
when he gave me the penalty, and I'm also not going to debate that. I don't know if that's true or not, but I also don't believe this this referee has like it out for me or something. So he's why is he going to lie? Like he probably did say that, and I just was so taken aback. It's the first time I've ever gotten a penalty. I felt I felt like I've done, you know, I felt like I had raced very fairly, and so I'm not going to debate that. And then the final piece, and I believe this is a piece really that I got disqualified for at the end of the day, and this is in the report, is that I tried to gain an unfair advantage over my competition. And that just simply, that really hurts me to hear that. Like, and, and like it's totally not true. I, 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 in fact, I was trying to not gain an unfair advantage over my competition through drafting. Like, so I disagree with every aspect of the, of the, of the, the reason I was disqualified and this is kind of now where it's on me and this is also kind of now where it hurts because had I been more aware and had I I guess been more present and not taken over by anger um, I don't want to get emotional I'm sorry and I don't I don't mean this um, I don't mean it like um, like I'm being wimpy or something but had I heard the referee and heard that I could have continued, I would have certainly continued. And, and that would have been mentally extremely challenging knowing you've been disqualified and that you're hoping that you get the thing overturned. But, um, you know, I really, I really truly believe that had I finished, I would have finished well and uh, I would have been able to get the, the, the thing overturned. You know, I have competitors who who I was actually making them pass, who are willing to vouch for me that I wasn't trying to gain an unfair advantage over them. They don't feel that I was trying to gain an unfair advantage over them. I also have competitors who are willing to vouch for me that I barely crossed the imaginary center line. These are the people who I was passing. So at the end of the day, it just really hurts because, and, and now this is now where I hope to, elicit positive change. If the center line thing is a rule, then it needs to be, you know, and you're going to disqualify people, then it needs to be very, very um, uh, conveyed very clearly to the athletes. And that's fine if it's a rule, and that's fine if you're going to disqualify people for it. But the athletes need to be very well, made very well aware of that, and I wasn't made very well aware of that. And secondly, you, as an athlete, you have to be, I know you're going to be mad if you ever get a penalty, you're going to be mad, but you have to be very present. And I, and I like went off into anger land and wasn't present. And I think that really, really hurt me because I could have, had I been able to hear the referee say that, then I could have finished and I could have raced and found out where I really stood and then protested, and I really believe I would have won the protest. I, I believe with all the evidence, apparently it goes to different levels, actually. The first level is just the referee there, and apparently they can say no, and I can say, so I still disagree, and it goes to like a different level, and then it goes to like a different level. I guess maybe you, I could have even gathered evidence after the fact, and, and, and I have my competitors who, 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 who could help me, um, and so, so I guess that's that's all I wanted to say. Um, I have to get it off my chest. Like it's like I don't know why <laughs> I don't know why I care so much. I understand if people think what, what why do you care so much? I get it. I don't know why I care so much. All I can say is that it's my life. Like I devoted my I've devoted my entire season to this race. And no, I wasn't gonna win. I know I wasn't gonna win. But like you have to appreciate someone who's like felt like they're like the career is coming to an end or something, a top five or something that was going to be, um, that was going to be a step in the right direction for me. So it, it is important to me. So that's my 70.3 world's experience. I don't want any negativity to come out of this. I don't want, like, this is not a, this is not a, like, a, let's give a middle finger to it's a so-and-so or let's bash so-and-so like it's got nothing to do with that it's, it's truly got nothing to do with that it's 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 about learning and growing and and improving and 
and I was in the wrong in places, and I believe I was in the right in places, and, and that's fine. That's, that's human interaction. There, it's always going to happen. It's going to be it's going to be mistakes made and there's going to be uh, judgment calls and I'm going to be upset and you're going to feel you're right. And that's, I mean, that's, that's life. I mean, it's all, that's all good. So I just need to give my piece of this story and I want, and I hope we can move on and we can, we can become better as a, as a team together. We are all in this together as a sport of triathlon. It's a small sport. It's a wonderful sport. It's a sport that saved my life. And so that's my 70.3 Worlds experience. I want to uh, congratulate Rico and Freddie and Jan on an amazing performances. Um, these guys are very inspiring. I mean, I will be swimming every day thinking about these guys and their their how complete these athletes are. And this is the future. And if I don't become a more complete athlete, I, I won't be able to do these races very soon. And so these guys are inspiring me to do that. So congratulations to all of those guys. And congratulations to everyone who did the race. It was a hard day, it's a hard course. And uh, you know, really good on you for getting out there and giving it your best. So I just need to let this go now. This is it. This is gonna be my, my final take on this interview. And, um, yeah, I just appreciate all the support, and let's let's stay together. Like it's a small sport. Let's keep this together. Let let's work together to to make our sport better, fairer, safer, and more accessible. And uh, I'll see you at the next one, Michigan, two weeks from now.